So just a few hours ago, <clears throat> I did part one of my repentance series. I talked about dividing the light from the darkness. Now it's just a few hours later and I'm feeling like I should do part two. Only I don't want to do it inside because it seems like uh, when I shoot these videos inside, especially if I'm in a hotel room, I get this awful greenish Frankenstein <clears throat> lighting. It just looks horrible. And uh, I like being outside. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, so part two is uh, gonna t I'm gonna talk about uh, identifying false beliefs and false traditions. So we were talking about dividing the light from the darkness. We're gonna take that a step further. We need to all understand that everything we believe and everything that we think we know is either false or incomplete. And that is really, really, really important. And so, as we're talking about repentance and dividing the light from the darkness, we really need to focus in on fixing everything about what we believe, which is counterproductive which is false, which is going to undermine your ability to have faith in Christ, to live the gospel, to repent, and to realize the blessings and to receive the promises <clears throat> the Lord promises the faithful. Understanding that there are a lot of realities and there are a lot of things that we, almost everybody does, sins we commit that cannot coexist with the higher blessings that God promises the faithful. So anyway, back to back to the topic of false beliefs and false traditions. It's been my observation that almost everybody, almost everybody has and maintains very, very close to their hearts all kinds of traditions and beliefs which are flat out wrong and which are incredibly destructive, very, very damaging, which completely undermine our ability to have faith in Christ and to repent. And I'm just gonna, I don't wanna get too specific, because if I get too specific, most people are just gonna shut me down. You've gotta figure this stuff out on your own. But uh, I will say this, that what most people believe in terms of who and what God is, is entirely inaccurate, especially beliefs about the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, whatever it is you believe about who and what God is and what those entities are, you need to be open to the high, high, high possibility that you are way off the mark. The other thing is, is most people do not understand at all what salvation is, what eternal life is, and they have, and they're, they're, most people, their understanding of what is required to receive salvation or exaltation or eternal life, most people, again, are way, way, way off the mark, which is really bad. 
And then third and finally, if you're a member of a church, any kind of a uh, religious institution, I'm here to tell you that you're being highly limited by the traditions and the tenets and the core of doctrine which is being taught and promoted, the narrative. You're being highly limited by what you're finding in whatever church you're going to. And not only that, in many, many, many cases, you are flat out being led astray. You're being deceived, you're being lied to. Every single, every single church on the earth today is fraught with falsehood and deception and with varying forms and degrees of evil. Again, I don't want to go into specifics, but it is very, very, very obvious to anyone who truly understands and, uh, and knows who God is, what God is, and how he operates. And you know, one of the reasons for that is truth is eternal, truth is infinite, and it's always growing. What we understand and know of truth is approximate. It's just a, it's just a fuzzy echo of that which truly is. And no matter who you are or what you are, your understanding of truth always, always, always needs improvement. And with the religious institution, they're going to have their core doctrine, their tenets, which are hard and fast. And anything which, which uh, goes beyond that mark or outside of that uh, predetermined boundary is going to be considered heretical and evil and wrong. And they're not going to let you go there. You absolutely must conform with, with the, uh, the doctrine and the tenets and the policies of church leaders. And, if, and uh, the other thing is, just about every church out there, a lot of what they do is based on them not wanting <clears throat> any kind of competition. And so anything or anyone that they view as a threat or as competition, they're going to strike it down. doesn't matter how much truth they have or how good they are or whatever goodness they offer. They don't care. They're going to strike it down. So when it comes to dividing the light from the darkness, identifying false beliefs and false traditions. This is absolutely critical to our spiritual progression. It's also the hardest thing to do. It is almost impossible for most people to be willing to give up the traditions that are so near and dear to their hearts. that most people simply don't have the courage or the honesty or the integrity to do it. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. Uh, a few months ago, I had a <laughs> uh, conversation with a friend of mine, a treasure, very treasured friend of mine, Robert Smith. And he had called me on the map <clears throat> for something. And he came down pretty hard on me. And I was surprised. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So I, I got a hold of him. I said, hey, let's talk. He's like, all right. And so, you know, we talked on the phone the next day. And I was like, dude, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Please, by all means, tell me where I am off base. I really want to know. 
and he was like jared first of all i want to really thank you for being humble and not just writing me writing me off and uh you know i could tell he was actually really deeply touched that i was you know i i told him i said look you know i'm a pilot when it comes to flying airplanes, safety is everything. Safety is everything. If I'm doing anything which is not right, which might jeopardize safety, which might jeopardize the mission, I don't care who it is, what it is. Uh, I don't care that I'm wrong. I want to know the truth. The truth will make you free. And the only safety we have is in the truth. He's like, yeah, that's, that's just like the gospel. I'm like, yep. And so, you know, that was a great conversation. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that's the bottom line. It doesn't matter how good and virtuous and amazing you think your father or your mother or your pastor or your bishop or your prophet or your pope or your whoever it is I don't care how good or awesome or, or righteous or holy you think these people are that have taught you all this stuff the fact of the matter is is everybody is wrong about something and if you really take a close look at it almost everybody is wrong about a lot of things and so getting back to this idea of dividing the light from the darkness identifying false beliefs false traditions we've got to really be honest and really be humble and really truly and sincerely seek for the truth of all things be willing to give ear to all the counter arguments all you know the different voices anybody who has a legitimate argument to make be open and honest about it so you know what I I could be wrong about that unless you can do that Unless you can consider, honestly, sincerely consider the possibility that you could be absolutely dead wrong about very, very important things, especially things that are near and dear to your heart. Unless you can do that, you're damned. You are absolutely damned. You are not going to be able to progress. And all those promises in the scriptures about being able to ask and receive and receive revelation upon revelation knowledge upon knowledge and receiving miracles and and visitations the ministry of angels even being able to see the face of god these are all promises in the scriptures you're not gonna you're not gonna receive these blessings or or, or a fulfillment of these promises if you're not humble enough and honest enough and courageous enough to to seek and receive correction so that's principle number two in my repentance series is going out and identifying what our false traditions and false beliefs are receiving the light separating out the darkness and being led by Christ in all things Anyway, that was 14 minutes. I'll see you next time.